friends, welcome back to my channel and to another pump video. So today's video is going to be my experience of my first couple of weeks on the Roche Solo Micro Pump. I've got it on my leg at the moment. Um, that was a really weird way of showing you. Um, and yeah, it's the first time trying the leg side, so I'll probably update you on that towards the end of the video. Um, yeah, I've just got a few clips of my first, like a couple of points in time in the first few weeks on the pump, showing you like my progression of using it, um, how my feelings changed towards it, a few hiccups that I did have along the way. Um, I did also have COVID for this whole time. Um, so dealing with that and how the pump really helped me deal with that as well. I'm gonna discuss it all in this upcoming vlog. So I hope you enjoy. Excuse the state of me. Um, I'm currently ill, but I'm so dedicated to wanting to like show you my pump journey as it goes. I just wanted to give you a quick update. So I got my pump on when uh, Monday, it is now Wednesday. And on Tuesday morning, I went to the gym and it fell off. So it's meant to last three days. Obviously it didn't quite last. Luckily um, I managed to keep the cannula in just about and it was hanging on by a thread. Um, until I got home and then I took off the infusion site um, and I put a new one in so it's a bit lower down on my stomach now um, but basically I think I just put it in a really bad spot um, for my first one so originally it was kind of here which is obviously if you can imagine if I'm bending down that's exactly where like my stomach folds over and so it was just constantly being moved and budged um, and being creased um, every single time I moved so yeah i've put it down here and it's actually a lot better like it feels a lot more flush to my skin all of the tape is completely stuck on whereas before there were lots of like ripples and stuff in all of the tape whereas this is completely flat it feels very secure when i like jump up and down i don't feel anything um and yeah it's been a full 24 hours now with the site as it is and yeah it does feel really secure so i just want to give you that update we did have not the easiest first day when i had to do a um an infusion site change um but now it does feel very good and obviously it's a bit annoying because i'm trying to work out my um basal rates while i'm on the pump um but obviously because i'm ill everything's a bit fluctuating and it's been a hard <laughs> adjustment period but i am actually really grateful because i think having the pump even though it would have been nice to have the first um couple of weeks as normal and flat so if you get my baseline it has been really good as i've been ill because i've been able to change my basal rate throughout the day um yeah adjust as i go see how i'm feeling how my blood sugars are reacting to different things and change my basal literally like like that um and have changes come into effect within an hour so i'm a lot more in range in my illness than i would normally be um, i'm definitely far from being in range the whole time but i haven't gone above 12 yet which is really good um so the pump is really helping with that okay so it is now the next monday after that previous clip you've seen um, as I was saying, I felt a bit ill on that day. It turned out I had COVID. Well, I have COVID. So I have been really, really ill and hence why I haven't been able to film anything for you because I just haven't had the energy to pick up my camera and film anything about the pump. So I'm hoping to kind of get that restarted from today. Um, one thing I will say is that the pump has been an absolute lifesaver while dealing with this. Um, so in that first clip, I think I mentioned that I hadn't gone above 12. I then, that night, um, kept getting higher and higher and higher. And I kept increasing my temporary basal rate. I got to a point where my temporary basal rate was on 200%. Um, and I went to sleep and I was 13 and I took some correction, bumped up to 200% basal and hoped it would come down. I woke up two hours later and I'd gone up to 17. And so I was like, oh, for goodness sake, like the pump isn't working. Like there's got to be something wrong with this infusion site or this reservoir because I'm still going high on double my insulin. So I took the pump off, took some Levamir instead, plus extra units that I would normally take for illness. Normally if I'm ill, I have an extra two to four units. I took an extra eight units um, because I was so high plus more correction. I then woke up two hours later and I was still high, so it had dipped down to about 10 and then shot back up again. So when I woke up, I was about 14, 15, and I realised it wasn't actually the pump had broken. And at that point as well, I have to say, when I first thought the pump was broken, I had a complete meltdown. Because if you remember, the first pump I had fell off in the gym, and then I thought this pump 
was broken and it was the second one I'd had and I was like well there's no like the pump's been great but there's no point having it if I'm going to be constantly worried about it failing it breaking and not being there when I need it to obviously it was really really late at night I was feeling really really ill at this point um and I knew I couldn't change the reservoir because it meant to change it overnight in case of any issues um and so I was like there's just nothing I can do about it and I was crying yelling all of that stuff so yeah went back to bed then woke up still high and I realized it wasn't the pump being broken it was that 200% basal wasn't enough um, so I did something which I'm not advising anyone to do because it's potentially very dangerous and I wasn't advised to do it myself but I just wanted any way to bring down my blood sugars so like I said I'd had some Levomir extra on top of what I normally have I then put my pump back on but down to 100% basal so I had Levomir plus extra plus 100% basal um, from my pump with some more correction insulin um, and like I said that is a lot of insulin I wouldn't recommend having um it's not, I'm not recommending having a basal in insulin like injection and pump on top but it's what I needed to bring myself down that was about 3 a.m and my blood sugars didn't come down until about 8 a.m the next morning when I woke up at that point I turned the alarms off because I couldn't deal with any more I just really needed to sleep I felt so so poorly um and yeah I woke up and I was about eight when I woke up in the morning and it finally came down and then from then on my resistance wasn't that bad at all but that that one night was absolutely terrible like in no amount of insulin would bring my blood sugars down um and so then from then on obviously I realized the pump wasn't broken and so I put it on I used it as normal and it's been so helpful because I feel like when you're on MDI there's a lot of pressure to make a decision in that moment as to what you think your insulin sensitivity is going to be for that day and you take your injection there and then and you have to live with that for the rest of the day where it's on the pump i think if i'm seeing myself being a bit high and not coming down i can think okay i'll put my basal up for a few hours equally if i go low and i find that i'm having repeated lows i can then recognize okay i'm not so resistant anymore i'm going to put my basal back to normal or lower it a bit um and i can adjust it by 10 percent like in 10% 10, 10 increments from zero up to 250% of my usual basal rate. Um, it has been annoying obviously because I haven't managed to work out what my actual basal settings are, but I just have it at one unit for it per hour at the moment. Um, and then if I feel like I'm having stubborn highs or lots of lows, then I adjust it up and down accordingly. So that's been so helpful because I can make a decision at any point in the day and change and that change will come into effect really, really quickly. So I have been so grateful for that because yeah, I thought after that one night where my blood sugars wouldn't come down, I thought I was gonna be really resistant. So initially I put my basal rate on to quite a high percentage, but then actually that next day I was really not resistant at all. And in fact, I had a day where I was 98% in target with pretty much with staying between 100 and 140% basal. Um, so that has been an absolute lifesaver. Um, and I'm so grateful that I got the pump when I did. The other thing I'm finding a bit like nervy is the fact that <laughs> I don't know when I can get my prescription because I obviously I'm now isolating. And when you get your pump, well, I was given a vial of uh, a thousand units and each reservoir takes 200 units and you change it every three days so that's 15 days worth um, and if you have any left over you can't get it back out of the reservoir so every three days it's 200 units um i'm now i've got two reservoirs worth left in my vial plus a couple of days left on this um but my gp and my pharmacy are really slow so my pump nurse wrote to my gp to get everything put on my prescription on the Monday, possibly the Tuesday morning last week, and as of Monday morning today, um, so a week later, it's still not available for me to order online. So that's one thing I'm a bit nervous about. And then luckily I do believe there are like volunteers for the NHS who are picking up prescriptions and dropping them off for people who are isolating. And I'm lucky I live in a building where I can just like buzz them in um, downstairs and they can leave my medication like in the communal lobby. And then I'll just go and pick it up when there's no one there and wear a mask so that hopefully should be okay but I just don't know when I'm going to be able to order it and obviously I've got only a week left and if any of my reservoirs go wrong then I've got no backup supplies because you just do get that first initial one vial at the clinic I'm at. I also need to talk to my the diabetes nurse about the supplies that get delivered because I do want to make sure that I have enough backups that the consumables for the pump which are delivered by the manufacturer rather than being ordered on prescription um, I do want to make sure they have enough 
backups of those two so luckily I do have enough leather made to get me by if I do have to have a little break from the pump but obviously that's not ideal when it's yeah the first few weeks getting into the pump um I would just like to stay on it as long as possible so I can work out um how it all functions properly for me um so yeah there are a couple of snagging points it is something I didn't particularly want to be having to worry about but luckily the nurse does give you regular phone calls on the first day so obviously I saw her on the Monday she phoned me then on the Tuesday to check everything was okay she then ph phoned me on the Thursday which was my first um site change and yeah she said I was can either go into hospital to do that or she would video time me video video time oh my gosh video call or facetime me sit me through it or also i was i was happy to do it myself without her because i had the instructions um and then she'd phone me after to check everything was okay um and then yeah in that call i let her know that i found out i had covid um and she asked if i needed another phone call on the friday to check i was okay but um we decided i'd just phone her if i needed her and i decided i didn't because yeah everything calmed down quite a lot by then um, and then she let me know she would phone me on Monday so today she's going to give me a call to check how everything goes over the first weekend so you do get a lot of um, contact and communication with your diabetes team in the first week or so two weeks which is amazing and she also like don't worry about trying to work out basal rates now we don't have to do it straight away and she's going to be there to support me through that as and when I am over this infection and back to normal routine and can get out of isolation and go to the gym and exercise um, and do all of that stuff that I'm normally doing and we can like analyse data, work out basal rates then. So they've been amazing at being really flexible with that. So that's good. Um, and another thing I did want to mention that I'm, so this is my uh, pump de controlling device. Um, I'm really loving is not be it while I'm ill, not having to do so much maths and calculations and work out like when I last did my injection and how much insulin I need to take off of my next injection based on that and I can literally just plug in my blood sugar and my carbs into here it's got my carb ratios it knows all of my previous um insulin doses and it just gives me a number and then I just press bolus and I don't have to think about it um, and so I'm so grateful for that I'm not having to constantly inject myself because another thing obviously when you're ill I don't know about you but I snack quite a lot like I'm not much of a meal eater and since this illness i've been really craving carbs so like i've just been eating like pastries um like dippy soldiers like eggs and toast um stuff like that and so being able to have multiple like doses throughout the day and not having to inject and inject and inject and just have it on the pump and not have to worry about insulin stacking because all of the previous doses are logged in here um that has been a lifesaver and really helped me okay so one thing i've been finding is that while i'm ill i'm using quite a bit more basal insulin it varies anywhere from 100 to 200 percent um of my normal basal rate which means obviously i'm getting through my insulin a lot quicker and i change my reservoir every three days um but once you've changed your reservoir you can't get back any insulin that's left in that reservoir so you really want to use up as much as you can and especially at the moment i think i already mentioned i'm struggling to get uh, my new prescription also you're not supposed to do a reservoir change within three hours of going to bed in case there's any issues with your reservoir and then obviously if it's overnight you're not going to notice if you're creeping up especially if you don't have a cgm um, and so it's really important to be like awake and conscious and able to act if you realize there's a problem with your um pump and you need to change the reservoir so i need to decide within four hours of sleeping whether i'm going to change the reservoir or not um, and I want to make sure I've used as much of it as possible and preferably only change the reservoir every three days as planned. But because I'm using so much more insulin when I'm doing my extra basal rates, um, I am noticing that it it's a bit like on the line as to whether I'd actually make it through the night with enough insulin. So what I've been doing to save as much insulin as possible is um, using my pens for some of my boluses and keeping the pump on for like obviously keeping my basal going throughout the day, being able to alter my basal as and when I want and then any small bolus doses for like a small snack or correction. But for meals, I have been using my pens and I'm finding that's one little hack of making sure I get the most out of the insulin that's in my reservoir, not having to do extra reservoir changes and not wasting any insulin while still making the most out of the pump. Because one thing I can do on this is I can still use my um, bolus calculator and then um, I can log giving insulin with a pen on here. 
so it still knows all of the insulin that I already have on board and it will still factor that into all of the calculations so I still get to use the computer here and then there's a setting to say inject with a syringe so I'm about to have my dinner and I will just run through with you now how I do that process so I go to do my bolus um, I do bolus advice and this is when it does the calculation for me so up here I put in my blood test and that is 7.3 or my libra scan even put in my result do okay i then wait for it to load i then add carbohydrates and dinner is going to be rice and curry so i put in the carbs for that save um i then click bolus it doesn't actually bolus until you press the green button. So then what it does is it tells you your dosage. And then what I do is I click here where it says standard. This is how I can choose if I want a multi-wave bolus, quick bolus, or if I do pen slash syringe, okay, um, 4.5 units. This thinks that my pen is only one unit, so it's probably gonna round this up. I then click bolus again, and it says um, deliver the insulin amount with a pen or syringe, and it says five units. Um, and then I can obviously just put in as much insulin as I want and then I press OK um, and then it's all sorted. As you can see, doing it that way it means that I still have all of my insulin doses stored on my pump. It can still factor all of my insulin on board into all of the calculations but I'm avoiding using those four and a half to five units each time. And so that when I go to bed tonight, I always make sure I have like 13 hours worth of a 200% um, bolus so that if I do have to go on 200% all night and then that gives me an hour here or there in case there's any like changes. Um, so yeah, I wanna go to bed on at least 26, but to be honest, actually, no. I definitely would not go to sleep without at least 30 units left in my pump. Um, so yeah, doing that, doing it that way means I'm just double covered and can be 100% sure that I will have no reservoir issues, have enough insulin to go to sleep on and not have to change any reservoirs early. Okay, so update on like the leg site. Um, personally, in terms of like insulin, insulin absorption and the effectiveness of the actual site, I haven't noticed too many differences. I've done two sites on my thigh now um, and I haven't noticed a huge difference in terms of whether it's as effective as my stomach site um, and as fast absorbing and that kind of stuff. However, since having COVID, my blood sugars have generally been quite a bit higher um, and a lot more fluctuations. I have days where I'm very sensitive and days where I'm very resistant. And managing that even with the pump and even with being able to make full use of temporary basils and extended boluses and multi-wave boluses, um, it has still been very tricky to manage. And so I'm, I can't be 100% sure about what is the fault of the site or what is the fault of just what my body is going through. Um, in terms of its convenience, I so the first leg site I had, it fell off after the first time I went to the gym. However, I did have it on a um, leg day and I was doing hip thrust. So I was constantly trying to roll the barbell obviously over my leg and it kept catching every single time. No matter how careful I was, like the barbell simply wasn't high enough off the ground. So it kept on bashing it. Um, and yes, yeah, so by the time I came home and took my leggings off, it just came off. Um, it had completely been knocked off. Um, but then the second time I went to the gym, um, I put it on a, I put the leg site on again and I went back to the gym and it was completely fine for all of my upper body days and even um, cardio and running. Like I had leggings, very tight leggings on over the top um, and obviously running, that's a lot of leg movement. Um, but even then it was completely fine. It didn't fall off um, throughout upper body and cardio sessions. So what I'm going to do is my leg sessions are Monday and Wednesday. So if I put my new site on, on either a Wednesday or Thursday, um, then I will use a leg site um, to give my stomach a bit of a break. Um, but if I put it on any day after that, then I'll use my stomach site because I don't want to have it on a leg site for um, a leg day and each site lasts three days. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the leg site. I also was asked whether I feel it when I go to sleep. People saying it looks quite bulky. It's actually not very bulky and I don't feel it at all. I haven't noticed it once. Like it's been three weeks now um and i haven't had a single problem with sleeping i haven't yeah i literally haven't noticed it so no i personally don't um have any problem with it being bulky or anything like that overnight um but yeah i'm a very deep sleeper anyway i i'm not very i'm not like a fussy sleeper if that makes sense um 
and I do toss and turn quite a lot and yeah I haven't noticed a difference so yeah that's the update on the leg sites um, the update on how sugars are going at the moment post covid um, and with everything that's been going on and isolation and getting back to the gym it's been very very tricky even with the pump and so obviously yeah having all of that going on um, hasn't made it easy transitioning onto the pump because there's all you're getting used to the new technology while having all of this going on um so it hasn't been like the most smooth transition however yeah i'm so grateful to be to have had the pump because um it has made it easier in terms of being able to do temporary basils and that kind of stuff so that is where we're at so far and hopefully within like a couple of months i'll be back to smooth sailing and that is a summary of my first couple weeks on the pump um i am going to do soon like a day in the life vlog like the old ones i used to do using the pump so you can see how I use it like from the start to the end of the day everything that I do with basal rates depending on how my blood sugars are going the different boluses I do the different types of boluses that I use but I just wanted to show you at, like to start with how the process is like when you're getting used to the pump um and yeah ways it's really really helped me and also like a few snags that have, co that have come along the way um and how you can kind of like mentally prepare and like logistically compare all of like compare prepare all of the admin that you're going to be have to do ha going to have to be doing um so yeah i hope this video was useful if you are getting a pump soon or thinking about getting a pump um and stick around for a review of my brush solo pump that's going to come soon once i have been using it for long enough that i feel that i can give you a full review um as well as yeah pump day in the life videos coming soon see you then